So today we're going deep diving into the world of poultry health, specifically why so many broiler chickens, those are the ones we eat, have problems with their legs. Yeah. You know, why they have trouble walking. You might be thinking, why should I care? Well, maybe you're an animal lover, or maybe you just want to be, you know, a more informed eater. Whatever the reason, get ready, because we're going to uncover some pretty wild stuff. We're talking about how everything from, like, microscopic toxins to the air these birds breathe can impact whether they can even stand up. It's true. So picture this. Okay. A chicken, but it's struggling to walk, can't even reach its food or water. Yeah, it's a sad thought. It's a sad situation. And it's way more common than you'd think. These leg problems, they're all over the poultry industry. And it's not just, you know, an animal welfare issue, though, of course, that's important. It's a huge economic problem for farmers, too. Yeah. We're talking about, you know, We've bred these broiler chickens to grow so fast. Yeah, to get big quickly, right? Right, to get as much meat as possible. Yeah. But that puts a ton of stress on their bones, their organs, everything. And here's the crazy part. Over two-thirds, that's like most of the grain samples out there, contain these things called mycotoxins. Oh, yeah. They're like these invisible threats in the feed. They're silent, but they're everywhere. It's like this chain reaction you don't see. These microscopic toxins, they actually make each other worse. Wow. Yeah, the combined effect, it's way worse than if they were just by themselves. Basically, they're stealing the nutrients the chickens need for strong bones. So it's not just that they're not getting enough. Something's actively taking it away. Exactly. Robbing them blind. And just to really hit home how important this is, get this. Toxin intake can increase leg deformities from like 2% to a whopping 25%. Which is huge. It's a tenfold increase. It's crazy. Ten times worse just from these toxins. It shows how vital nutrition is for these birds. It's everything. So it's like, we got to make sure they're not eating these bad things, but then we also need to make sure they get all the good stuff they need. Exactly. And in the right amounts. It's a balancing act. Take calcium and phosphorus, for example. They're both super important for bone development, but the ratio between them, that's key. So it's not just about eating enough. It's about eating the right things in the right balance. Exactly. Like we know we need a balanced diet, right? It's the same for chickens, only even more important because they grow so fast. Right. They grow so fast. So they need, what else do they need to build strong bones? Okay, so we know micronutrients are important for us, right? right? But for these guys, with how fast they grow, even the tiniest amounts matter. We're talking about things like manganese, zinc, copper. These tiny things make a big difference. Okay, so it's like even if they get enough of the big stuff, if you're missing these tiny things, it can still mess them up. Absolutely. It's like forgetting a tiny but crucial ingredient in a recipe. Like if you're missing the yeast, your bread won't rise. Right, right. Okay, so we've got these sneaky toxins messing things up from the inside, and then we have to make sure they get the perfect nutritional balance. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't end there, does it? I mean, we also have to think about the world they live in, right? The environment. Oh, absolutely. That environment plays a huge role. It's just like with us, you know? Even if we eat all the right foods, mm -hmm. if we're stressed all the time, yeah. it's going to impact our health. It's the same for chickens. Everything from the type of bedding they have to the air they breathe, it can all affect their legs. Okay, so let's get into that. What are some of those environmental factors that can make or break a chicken's leg health? Well, you know, something we might not always think about is their bedding. The stuff they're standing on. Yeah, exactly. Imagine wearing, like, the worst shoes ever all day long. Ouch, yeah. Now you're a chicken and you're trying to walk around, but it's crowded. There are sharp objects, maybe, or someone handles you roughly. Even just bad bedding can cause injuries. Makes sense. So it's not just about preventing disease. It's got to be a decent place to live. Exactly. Animal welfare, it's about more than just keeping them alive. It's about letting them actually live. Right. That makes sense. And yeah. what about the temperature? I mean, inside those barns, it can't be comfortable all the time, right? Absolutely. You got it. Think about it. We hate being stuck in a hot room or a freezing cold basement, right? Yeah. Chickens, they feel it too. Those extremes, they can really mess them up. And then there's ventilation. If the air quality is bad, you know, harmful gases and stuff. Yeah, that can't be good. It's not good for anyone, least of all a chicken respiratory problems, all sorts of issues. And yeah, that affects their legs too. It's all connected. It really is. Everything impacts everything else. It's easy to forget. They can't just like change the thermostat if they're uncomfortable. Nope, they're stuck with it. And speaking of being stuck, what about space? How many of these birds are crammed into these places? That is a great question. And it's a big factor, what we call feeding density. Too many birds in one place, it's stressful. There's 
competition for food and water, and all that impacts their legs. So if they're always bumping into each other, can't even stretch their legs, that'll mess them up. You got it. Studies show higher feeding density. It means weaker bones, shorter legs. Even their legs can get all curved. Wow, that's crazy. Okay, this next one blew my mind. Lighting. You're telling me lighting affects their legs. Sounds weird, right? Totally. But yeah, how much light they get, how long they're exposed, it can actually change how their bones grow. So I guess too much light is just as bad as not enough. Exactly. It's about balance, just like with the food, the environment, everything. Some scientists are even trying out these different lighting schedules, like two hours of light, one hour of dark. Huh. To help their legs grow better. Yeah. It's pretty interesting stuff. It really is. And speaking of interesting stuff, we were talking about those mycotoxins in the feed before, right? But it's not just the toxins themselves, is it? There's other stuff in there that can cause problems. You're right. Sometimes it's things we think are harmless, but they have these, you know, unintended consequences. Take thyrum, for example. Thyrum. What's that? It's an insecticide. Sometimes it ends up in chicken feed. Okay. So insecticide, chicken legs, how's that connected? Well, thyrum's been linked to something called tibial dyschondroplasia, or TD for short. It's a bone disorder, weakens their bones, deforms them, especially in the legs. So even when we're trying to help them protect the food supply, it can backfire. It's tough, right? It just shows how complicated it all is. We can't just look at one thing in isolation. It's all connected. Exactly. It's nutrition. It's how we manage them. It's the environment. Everything plays a part. And speaking of looking at the big picture, our deep dive into these chicken legs. Yeah. It doesn't stop there. We've talked about the problems they face growing up, but what about before they're even born? Oh, yeah. Let's rewind even further, back to when they're still in the egg. So we're going like all the way back to the beginning when they're just embryos. What's going on in the egg that could cause problems later on? Oh, that's a great question. It's easy to forget that part. (laughs) But it's just like, think about a human baby in the womb. Right. They get everything from their mom. Exactly. And it's the same for these chicks. They're getting everything they need from the yolk, right? And just like with us, if they don't get the right stuff during that time. It can have lasting effects. Oh, yeah. Big time. It can really mess them up down the line. Those early weeks, they're crucial. We're talking about vitamins, minerals, all of it, even fatty acids. So it all starts even before they hatch. Absolutely. It's like, remember that house analogy we were using? Yeah. If the foundation's weak, the whole thing is compromised. Take vitamin D, for example. Vitamin D, right, for strong bones. Yeah, it helps us absorb calcium, right? Well, it does the same thing for those little embryos. If they don't get enough, even if they get plenty of calcium later on. They're already behind. They're playing catch up, exactly. And it's not just about what's in the egg, you know. The environment during incubation, that plays a huge role, too. So even then, it's still about more than just the food. Right. It's everything. Temperature is a big one. Oh, yeah, I bet. Too cold and the eggs won't hatch at night. Well, it's more than that. If the temperature isn't right, those chicks can develop all sorts of problems, like toe deformities are common. Just from the temperature. Yep. It can mess with their little skeletons as they're forming. And if it gets too hot, that's bad, too, especially later in incubation. It can actually slow down their bone development. Wow. So it can't be too hot. It can't be too cold. It's got to be just right. It's a delicate balance, that's for sure. And what about, well, I'm guessing ventilation is important, too. Yeah. To make sure they get enough oxygen. You got it. If there's not enough fresh air circulating, it can mess with their ability to absorb nutrients from the yolk. And we know how important those nutrients are. It's like, I don't know, building a house with no windows. It's not going to be pretty. Not at all. This is amazing. We started with these microscopic toxins, and now we're talking about, like, the air these chicks breathe before they're even born. It's crazy how much goes into it, right? It really is. It just shows you how interconnected everything is. We often think about these things in isolation, but it's the whole picture, you know? The whole system. Exactly. From the smallest nutrient to the environment, it all matters. It's clear that there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Hopefully you've learned something new, and we'll catch you next time for another deep dive.